Good, you didn't lift your hand. That's smart. The devil's ultimate goal is not to turn you into a drug addict. The devil's ultimate goal is for you to go join a church somewhere and get religious. And then die and go to hell. That's his ultimate goal. His ultimate goal is for you to tell little white lies until you become colorblind in the church. Persecution comes from the church. It comes from religious folk. And that's what Jesus warned these disciples about. If you go out and you preach the truth, he said, just know there's some people that claim to be religious, that claim to know God. They're the ones that are going to persecute you. And then the government. You shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. So now we're moving beyond the gates of, or the cities of Israel. Now we're moving to the Gentile territory. When you go out in the Gentile territory and you preach the gospel, he said there's going to be a government persecution. Government persecution. In those days, brothers and sisters, it was impossible for you to be a citizen of the government. It was impossible. Woo, it was impossible for you to be a good citizen in those days. If you were a good citizen, you, would, you could not be a Christian. Because to be a good citizen meant that you went and offered incense to Caesar and you called him Lord. And if you did not do that, they put you to death. Why? Because you were not a good citizen. Amen. You were a disruptor of families. You broke up the home because you became a believer and your husband didn't want to be a believer. And so you're breaking up the home. And the Roman government did not like that. So in those days, for you to be a good Christian, you could not be a good citizen. Now, I want you to think about that. In the days that we live right now, as government persecution is slowly beginning, I say we've never been persecuted as a church here. But as the United States of America, the government begins to infringe upon the rights of believers. Look at the mentality that's used. Well, if you were a good citizen and you cared about everybody else, you wouldn't meet during the COVID crisis. You wouldn't have church in the COVID crisis. If you cared about people and you were a good citizen. But you see, I have to obey God rather than men. Which means sometimes the world's going to look at you and the government's going to look at you and say, you're not a good citizen. Well, sometimes I can't be a good citizen to be a Christian because it goes against the word of God. Somebody said, praise the Lord. And I'm not in rebellion against the government, anything like that. But when it comes down to it, if they try to take my rights away as a Christian, as a believer, I, I have to go with God. And so at the very beginning of that COVID crisis, the Lord spoke to me and he said, you don't close the doors of the church. Because what you're doing, if you do, you're slowly giving away your rights as a believer. Okay. And so I made the decision not to close the doors of the church. It didn't matter what the cost was. Thankfully, though, our governor here made it a, what do they call that? We're essential. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, you know, we didn't have to face any consequences. But we'd already made the decision. Woo. Now watch. So I talked to Brother Edmonds in China, in Taiwan, you know. And he said, Brother Carter, you know, they were dealing with some of the same stuff over there. And he said, I've just anointed everybody in the church with oil. And we, he said, I just prayed over everybody in the whole church, right? And I said, oh, wow, Brother Edmonds. I said, we've already decided we're not closing the doors of the church. And I said, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get everybody in the church. I'm going to anoint everybody with oil in the name of Jesus and pray over them. And brother, listen to me. The grace of God, the miracle of God. Not one person in this church has been diagnosed with COVID. Not one person. And so what I believe that God honored that. That stand that we took. Amen. So I give God all the glory and all the honor. 
Brother, there's some churches, they shut their doors. Shut the doors of the church. And then when they opened it back up, man, COVID ran rampant through their churches. Brother Edmonds told me about one church. He said, uh, about one, one, one pastor, he said, man, everybody in their church has been infected with it. Every one of them. Every one of them. And I said, Brother Edmonds, I said, we haven't had one case. Not one case. And he said, Brother Carter, nor have we. Because we put our faith, our faith in God Almighty. And of course, we complied where we could, where we, need, where we needed to, or whatever, distance, whatever, you know, sanitation, whatever. We did all of that. But I'm not going to close the doors of the church. It doesn't belong to me. It belongs to God. Is it a pastor you can't see what you're doing? Giving up the rights, your rights to worship God. Not only your rights, but a call by God to do that. So all I'm saying is this. I'm not trying to rebel against the government. Okay? What I'm saying is there are times, though, you cannot be a good citizen and be a Christian. You have to be a Christian first. And then be a good citizen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I'm not looking for, for a reason to close the church doors. You know. Because then, then what, you, what you get as a pastor too. The saints start kind of liking it. Because they get to stay home and watch you on television. You know. Watch you on video. Watch you whatever. As you do your morning worship service. And they really like it. Because they don't have to get up. Take a bath. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to get in the car and drive to church, man. That's pretty cool. Don't get to even, don't, don't have to look at anybody that you don't want to see in church. Oh, thank God I get to stay home because now I don't have to look at sister so-and-so. I'm not a cynic. I'm just being truthful. So what are you going to do now? Pastor, you did it. You did it before, so now we can stay home, right? No. There are a lot of problems coming out of that situation, man. You better make up your mind what you believe and take a stand when God calls you to take a stand. Hallelujah. Say praise the Lord. So I, I'm just rejoicing in God today. And I told you before, if you come up here and you tell me I've been diagnosed with coronavirus, I'm going to say, I don't believe you. Shut up. <laughs> it's not true. Because we anointed, we were oil. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. God is a good God, isn't he? But you get the point, man. So they take them out and they'd stone them. Or they'd, you know, martyr them. Because they remained faithful to Jesus Christ when the government said, see, we ought to obey God rather than men. And we will obey men when we can, but we need to obey God if it goes contrary to what God says in His Word. Hallelujah. I've already told you there may come a day where you're not going to meet in this building anymore. That we may have to meet in a field somewhere. It could get that bad. So we thank God right now for the freedoms that we have because they could be taken away overnight. So whatever you do, you get out and vote this next election. Make sure you vote for the right person. And uh, trust God ultimately, though. You shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in the same hour what you shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. So don't premeditate what you're going to say. He said, when you get there, God will be with you. God's presence will be there with you. And when you open your mouth, there will be an anointing. And God will, God will give you the words to say, hallelujah, to the Lamb. Amen. And I've listened to some, one preacher, one particular who continued to meet during that COVID crisis, they took him and put him in jail on more than one occasion 
for doing that. And you know what? When he opened his mouth, you could tell God gave him supernatural unction and words to say to the media. And he was willing to pay a price for it, brothers and sisters. And I thank God for men like that. Hallelujah. Uncom- they won't compromise the word of God. You know, God, he said, God is saying, he's going to be with you. He's going to be with me. And I know that. And when you open your mouth, God's going to give you what to say between those government officials. What are you going to do when they start distributing the mark of the beast? You're going to walk up there and say, I'm a good citizen. Put it right here. You'd be surprised. I'm going to blow your mind. There are some Bible teachers that have already told their people to go ahead and take the mark. Go ahead and take. They didn't say take the mark of the beast, but they said go ahead and accept the implant. Identification implant. And they say because God knows your heart. So you're going to walk up there, right? In the name of being a good citizen, you know, and say, put it right here, I'm a good citizen. Put it right here, I'm a good citizen. Yeah, you're going to go to hell too. Because you're denying Jesus Christ. So we got religious persecution, he said, was coming. He said government persecution is coming. But he's with us. And he'll give us what we need to say. But... We're going to be wise as serpents, but we're going to be harmless as doves. Brother, now we move to family. You're going to have problems in your family. Brother shall deliver up the brother to death and father the child. The children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Problems in the family. Verse 34, think not that I'm come to send peace on the earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, the daughter against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foe shall be they of his own house. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. The cross of Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, it split the world. When Jesus Christ came into the world, he brought division. He separated the heathen and put put the heathen on one side of that cross. And he put the believer on the other side of that cross. Calvary divides the human race. When Jesus came, he didn't just divide history in time, B.C., A.D. When he came, he divided the human race. The unbeliever on one side, the believer on the other side. Unbeliever, believer. Divided. And so, brothers and sisters, that's the way the cross will do in your family. It will come. It will separate. He said, I came to bring a sword. I, I didn't come to bring peace. You have to understand that when you become a believer, your family members might not be a believer. And there's not going to be, it's not going to be cohesive. There's going to be a division there. Hallelujah. You say, praise God, you understand that? Because the cross is a dividing point. If you're waiting for your unbelieving husband to get into the church before you live for God, you're going to die and go to hell because he may not ever come. If you're waiting for your unbelieving children to get back in the church, they may never get back in the church and you'll die and go to hell. You have to understand that when you become a Christian, there's a price you're going to pay, even with your own, in your own family. Micah chapter 7 says even this, when you're sleeping with your spouse in the same bed, it says don't tell them, don't talk to them about things. Be very careful about what you say to them in confidence. Be careful what you say to them. Because they may use it against you. 
The Jewish rabbis, when they looked at these verses, or they looked at Micah 7 in particular, Micah 7 talked about that. Don't tell your spouse. Keep it to yourself. They said that is a time called the tribulation period. When you get in the tribulation period, you're not going to be able to trust even your own spouse. So be careful what you say to them in secret. Because they may use it against you in the future. You have to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Because the cross, brothers and sisters, divides your family and my family today. And that's the way it is. Jesus Christ said that. Do you understand that? You say, well, I'm just waiting for my husband to get into church, then I'll live for God. No. It may never happen. I'm going to wait for my children, my children to live for God, then I'll get on fire for God. It may never happen. Why? Because the cross... Because Jesus Christ separates. There's certain aspect of this gospel message that brings division. And you can try to glue it together and you can try to put it together. And, you know, but it's just not going to work because you can't walk together if you don't believe the same thing. Now I know. See, this is, a little bit, this is a little bit much for some people. They can't handle it. But this is true discipleship. Can I, can I let you in on a little bit of secret here? You won't have to worry about your family members coming around you if you stay on fire for God. I said, if you stay on fire for God, you think they're going to want to get around you? You're living for the Lord, you know, and you're talking about the Lord, and you're talking about Jesus is to come back, all these end time events that are going on in the world, and they're living in the world. You think they want to be around you? you talking like that. No, you put their life under conviction. Uh, y'all aren't shouting very much this morning. Why aren't you shouting this, this morning? You know what my pastor told me? He preached this one time when I first got into church. He said, you don't have to worry about all your friends. What are you going to do with all your friends? How to get rid of all your, your old running buddies? He said, you don't have to worry about that. He said, you get on fire for God, they'll drop you like a hot potato. You know, as nice a guy as I am, as likable and lovable as I am, do you know there's, there's just some parties that people don't invite me to? And I lose sleep at night and I cry. <laughs> no, man. They paid me a compliment. They don't want me at their party. Mm. Praise the Lord. Wonder why. Might make the situation a little bit uncomfortable. Hallelujah. But they don't have any problem inviting you. Quiet. <laughs> Say praise the Lord. I love you, man. I'm not getting on to you. I'm just telling you the truth. You understand that? I used to wonder, why don't they invite me? Well, probably because they know I wasn't going to come anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, hallelujah. But you understand, that's what Jesus said is going to happen. How many of y'all face this? You can lift your hand on this. I'll face some of this. You face some of this? Yeah. Then that's probably a pretty good sign that you're a true believer. <laughs> hallelujah. You're paying a price for the gospel? You're paying a price? Price to be a disciple, Jesus Christ. Are you paying a price this morning with your family? What do you do? Stand up and worship. Praise God. Rejoice. I remember now we first got into church, brother. Decision. I was a new convert. There was a sister in the church. Every time she came to church, her husband wasn't a believer, you know. And every time she came to church, because she came to church, when she got home, she knew she was going to be faced with a beating. That man beat her for going to church. But you know what? Every time the church doors were open, she was there. You can beat me. You can do whatever you want to do. But I'm going to church. 
you know. And I don't remember a lot of people that I that went to church with in those days, but I remember her. She made an impact upon my life. Hallelujah. You know, the problem is, brothers and sisters, a lot of times people get bitter in the church. They get bitter. They get full of hatred. They, they start complaining. They complain against God. They complain about everything. They're bitter and they're full of hatred. Why is this, why does God allow this to happen, you know, to me? Why is it my family in the church, my children, they get bitter toward God? Hate, full of hatred. And let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Brother Dye said this years ago, my mentor. He pity when he prayed to God, he didn't pray to God. He didn't pray and say, God, keep me from failure. When Brother Dice prayed to God, he said, Lord, I'm not asking you to keep me from failure. I'm asking you to keep me from the results of failure. From bitterness and hatred and complaining against God. You understand, brothers and sisters? Because if you're not careful, you go through things, man, you can get bitter and full of hate. God, don't, don't deliver me from what I'm going to go through, but just, Lord, deliver me from letting that get inside of me where I get bitter and angry and full of hatred and rebellion. You know? And the knowledge of the Word of God protects me. And the knowledge of the Word of God protects you. That's why I preach it to you verse by verse. I preach the whole Bible to you almost two times through. From Genesis to Revelation. Almost two times through in 26 years. Because this will protect you. Brother Dice also said this. He said the devil has thrown everything he can at me. And he said this in his latter years before he passed away. He said, the devil has come after me with everything he could possibly do. He said, the devil exhausted himself trying to destroy me. But he said, because I had a knowledge of the word of God. He couldn't do it. And I think you know what he's talking about because I do. Man, the devil's thrown everything he possibly could at some of us. To destroy us. And I know it. But the Word of God protects us. It protects me. Because I know what it says. I know the truth. So it doesn't matter what comes, what the devil tries to use to destroy you. Because you know the Word. You know the book. You know there's going to be persecution from religious people. You know there's going to be government persecution. You know there's going to be division in your family. You know that. Before it ever happens, Jesus said it would. That cross, brothers and sisters, that cross separates. Standing up for the truth at times means you're not going to get to go to certain things. Because if you do, you know you're stepping in and you know you're compromising. But I've been showing up at the event. And I, I'm talking about myself. Myself. I was recently in a situation. I had to look at it. Do I attend or do I not attend? I just didn't feel like it was the right thing for me to do. To attend. Doesn't mean that I don't love. Doesn't mean that I don't care. It's just I looked at the situation overall and I just said I can't do it. I can't go. And it was in relationship to family. You can't go to everything. You can't attend to everything, brothers and sisters. Because the situations aren't right. And it's hard. But you know what? I'm not, I'm not uh, hurting today. I'm not... Uh, Worried about it. I'm not, it hasn't got the best of me, you know. I'm not, uh, you know, in a, I'm not a basket case because of it. No, because I know I did the right thing. And you might have looked at it and you might have said, well, I think you'd have been okay if you'd have done it. You might have said that, but in my heart, it would have been the wrong thing to do. 